and welcome to the WP Campus podcast. This is the podcast for WordPress people in higher education. My name is Jen McFarland and uh, I am joined today. Um, Brian is off on vacation uh, in Europe, no less. Uh, he's really fancy pants, so he's left me here to do all the hard work. Um, but I've been graciously joined by Steve Persh, who is with Pantheon. Pantheon is one of our doctoral sponsors for this year's WP Campus conference coming up in just a few weeks. Um, Steve, welcome. Hello, happy to be here. <laughs> Great. Um, and do you want to go ahead and start by telling us um, a little bit about uh, you and your uh, where people can reach you? Sure. So Steve Persh, you can find me pretty much all over the internet as Steve Vector. It's a holdover from my calculus class days in high school. Steve plus Vector, that's my username on Twitter, GitHub, uh, WordPress.org, just about everywhere. So I'm just going to spell that for the people who can't see. It's uh, at S-T-E-V-E-C-T-O-R. So it's like a mish, it's a mash, a, a, a math up of Steve and Vector. <laughs> Brian's going to love that pun when he gets back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we uh, are, are really excited to have you and I'm extra excited because you're one of our first guests that we get to run the questions that we have now by you. Um, so in order to help us introduce you to our audience, can you start by letting us know, Steve, where do you work? I work at Pantheon. We're a web ops platform for Drupal and WordPress. Thank you. I already gave that one away, but you answered it. Much <laughs> uh, what's your official job title? Official job title is lead developer advocate. Um, which I think is a really cool <laughs> job title. Um, what do you actually do though? What does that mean? Sure. So, so what I actually do, I like to think of my job as the fun parts of my previous jobs that, that used to be like a, a narrow corner of the job are now just the whole job. So I come from a background of building Drupal and WordPress websites, starting as a freelancer, then working with a handful of agencies, mostly out of Chicago. I now live in Minneapolis. And when I was doing that job, it was basically one website at a time, make the new Drupal 7 site for this university. Okay, now make the new website for this uh, radio property. Now make the new website for this magazine. And in the in-between time between those uh, billable hours, I could maybe write a blog post, I could maybe contribute some open source code, I could maybe go and speak at a conference and. Um, uh, socialize there with the, the wider open source community. And now that's pretty much the, the whole job. There's uh, that public speaking side of it. There's a lot of conference travel, writing blog posts, pretty much doing, uh, in short, anything we can to get developers particularly to try out Pantheon and then whatever is necessary to make sure they're successful once they're on Pantheon. That, that does sound like a pretty dreamy job, I have to say. It is, I like uh, it. <laughs> yeah, what did you uh, get your degree in to get you this dreamy job? A theater major, of course. Oh, what fabulous. else would you do to get into, into this? <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> yeah, so I was, a, I was a theater major at Northwestern University. And uh, Brian I, is also a Northwestern <laughs> grad. He's going to be so mad. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I had a, a, an unofficial policy with myself during my, my junior year to sign up for one class per quarter that I really wasn't qualified for. So like, Northwestern is a major journalism school. And uh, I got myself early on the waiting list for like the introductory journalism major class. And by the time I was a junior, I could actually take it with mostly freshmen who had like been the editor of their high school paper or going to become professional journalists. And I was a, a pretend journalist working at the university radio station, doing radio news and wanting to have more familiarity with, with journalism. Uh, then I took, um, uh, a class, uh, an advanced research seminar in cognition and neuroscience, which again, I was not qualified to take, but it sounded like fun. And that yeah. was a mistake. But the one that really paid off <laughs> was, uh, was the class in the music tech department that had on its prerequisites list, uh, intermediate HTML and CSS knowledge. It didn't specify like you have to take this class before you take the other class. It just said intermediate HTML and CSS knowledge, which I had none of. Uh, but I, I had spring break to teach myself. So I did a lot of Googling and learned enough uh, and kept going after that class, making websites for, for theater companies in particular, and then all sorts of websites after that. That is a very interesting and meandering story. That, I mean, like, <laughs> that's, a, that's an yeah. interesting route to get to. Uh, so, so how much theater are you still doing? Like, is this on the Not side? much these days. No, no. no. After, after college, I did a lot of improv comedy and sketch comedy 
living in Chicago, uh, and then started doing more and more web development, kind of like the opposite route of a lot of people in, in that community who come from a, a more, uh, from a, uh, a non-theater background and then like get deep into improv comedy. I was done, doing a ton of that in high school and, and college and then found out I could make money like playing with websites and it felt like playing with Legos and that uh, that was more appealing to me than being a struggling actor. Yeah, pay better than uh, stand up. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's good. We are definitely going to have to talk offline later because uh, yeah, I, I did a lot of high school uh, theater. Mm -hmm. I had to let the dream die for college, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, so you said you went to Northwestern. Yes. Um, I'm really excited to ask you this final question, which is mm -hmm. who would win in a fight, um, your college mascot or Wapu? Because I believe Brian already answered this, but I'm, oh. I want to know your take on this. All right. Well, uh, well I'll waffle and, and give both answers, which was my first reaction uh, when you told me this question beforehand was like, obviously a wild cat. A wild cat would defeat Wapu. Would kill Wapu. Yeah. But the yeah. question, the question is, is like the mascot, and the mascot is Willie the wild cat. So it's not, it's not an actual wild cat. It is Willie the wild cat, just a cartoon cat, like more domesticated cat than wild cat. And Willie the wild cat, I think, would lose to Wapu. That's interesting. Now I'm going to have to do some googling and take a look yeah. at Willie the wild cat. Yeah, Brian yeah, thought it was fierce. Gonna be ugly. Yeah. <laughs> He was, he was thinking there was going to be a, a lot of scratching, which sure. maybe could would be. be. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, so I'm, I'm going to put Wapu and uh, Willie down as one and one in the battle. All right. <laughs> so we're going to have to get another Northwestern grad on here. All right. Um, sounds good. So today you're going to talk to us some, and uh, I do want to mention that you did a Drupal Camp keynote for Drupal Camp Belarus about um, higher ed web teams, which I want to go watch later, but we're going to talk about something a little tangential to that. Um, so why don't you just take us away a little bit there? Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit more about automated testing. It was, it was a topic uh, I presented on at the, the online version of, of WP Campus back in January. I'll be doing a, a very similar presentation at Hyatt Web in Milwaukee in October. And uh, one of the reasons I, I like talking about that is because I, I think it, it can be something very tangible that the teams can act on right away. Like the way I, I, I tried to frame the presentation for WP Campus was, you can do this right now. It doesn't have to be something that's always uh, put off for, for the next project when circumstances might be better for automated testing. Yeah, you made a good point beforehand, which is it always seems like um, this is something that's going to take a lot of work to set up and we need mm -hmm. to set aside time for it. And the setting aside of time, as we all know, especially for something like that, it, it becomes, it goes to the bottom of the list and it never gets looked at. Yeah, I, I think there's well-intentioned conversation around automated testing that it's, it can be helpful. Uh, it can improve the, the code itself that gets written. It can give you regression protection. You can get 100% automated test coverage. That sounds good, but it, for me, often felt like just, well, more than just out of reach. It felt very far out of reach. And uh, I, was always, I was always waiting for like the perfect client or the perfect project to come around that would let me do uh, automated tests. And in this job, I, I talk with a lot of web teams and I find pretty much everyone is struggling with that problem. And, uh, and I, I tried to then think of ways to, to make it more actionable, more, more immediate. So there, there are forms of testing that kind of focus on like the correctness of your code, unit tests, integration tests, system tests, like, is it behaving correctly? Uh, but that takes a, a lot of work to, uh, to do. You have to write all those tests yourself. You have to define exactly what, uh, what you mean by correct behavior. Uh, but there are other benefits to testing that you can get with, with a lot less effort. So what's the first, like, what's like step zero that you would mm -hmm. recommend for, for groups that want to get started at this um, and, and need to need that easy win kind of thing? Sure, sure. So, so often I, I'm talking with, with web development teams where the, 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 the like wider context of the conversation is a desire to, to do a workflow overhaul, to, to build up some continuous integration processes, maybe start pushing code to GitHub and 
uh, I, I went through this myself on, on web teams, the, the, the transition to, we're going to do all of our code changes through pull requests. And that will be a good thing to do. All the code changes will flow through pull requests. We'll get a review on every single one. And then after the pull requests are merged, we'll have this formalized deployment pipeline and you end up drawing this very complex looking diagram, all these boxes flowing into one another. And yes, when the pull request is submitted, that is when the tests run great. So I'll, I'll ask these teams, okay, do you have automated tests to run at that moment when the pull request is created? And they'll say no. And, and that, that becomes the, the big stumbling block because uh, if, if it feels like we have to draw all these boxes, we have to fill out all these boxes, oh, and we don't have anything to put in the automated test box, I think the simplest thing to put in that box is code style checking. Okay, uh-huh. So, uh, so the, the WordPress community, pretty much every coder community has, has decided on some arbitrary coding style. Line breaks, tabs versus spaces, do you put space uh, in between the, opening parentheses of a, of a function declaration and the first parameter, or, you, or do you not? So arbitrary things that like PHP doesn't care about, the server running the code doesn't care about all these things, but the people care about it a whole lot. And, uh, and it's uh, fairly easy to check and see, like, yes, this, this found my mm -hmm. mistake. And yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I think the, so the, the reason I, I recommend it as, as the first one is because uh, the team implementing it doesn't have to decide, like, WordPress as a community already decided what's right and what's wrong for code styling. And when the check runs and you get a, a green pass or a red fail, like there's no argument. Like either it did comply or it didn't. Other, other forms of testing can have like false positives, false negatives. You might have to like manually check a, a report and decide like, do I care about this failure? Do I not care about this failure? But if you decide we're going to comply with WordPress coding standards, it's either yes or no. Yeah. Um, so I would follow that up with, that's, that's the easy one. What would you say is the most important automated testing for Right, team? yes. So, so coding styles aren't a particularly valuable test. Like that, that's, that's also part of the reason I recommend doing them early, just as a reminder that these aren't magic. Like getting a green check mark doesn't, tell you everything. Uh, and if you start with code style checks, like that's a really good reminder, like this is, this is a guarantee of almost nothing at all. We're just saving time for the team members. But uh, it just feels like a nice win. Yeah, right. It, it, get, it gets you a, a solid foothold in, all right, we have, we have automated tests. They're not doing much. We can add more of them later. A you more can tell your boss that you got that out yes. of the way. <laughs> automated testing, done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but a, a more valuable test to add, one that will, will actually actually be more likely to um, to prevent a bug from going out to production is something like visual regression testing. Uh, it's something a, a coworker of mine, Andrew Taylor, will be presenting on at, uh, at WP Campus uh, later this summer. And That's it's, an excellent plug. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, yeah. Plug, plug, Folks, plug. Make sure you, if you're coming to WP Campus, you want to come see the visual regression testing session by Andrew, look it up. Yeah. So the, the, the basic idea is that, uh, especially in the context of, of higher ed, like, there are, sometimes a, a institution will have more websites than it knows about. There's a website on some subdomain. What? Goes, yeah, you there must was, be joking. It was commissioned by a professor who's lost no longer, websites. Right. What? The professor is no longer there. The developer who built it is no longer there. No one wants to take responsibility for shutting the website down. Right. But you know it is on a now insecure version of WordPress. So like. The thing I would do in that situation is I would, tr I would try to get a non-live version of the website. I would hope that there's already a dev environment or maybe just on my local machine, try to get a, lo try to get a, a dev version, apply the WordPress core update there, and then just visually check between the live site and the non-live site, is anything different? Did I break anything? So it's, it's not as robust as like a behavioral or, or a system check that is, that is checking for the correctness of the website or the behavior. Really all you're checking is, did it change? Like it might be broken now, but if, but does is it, it more broken? Is it more broken? Did anything change when we updated WordPress core? Because if you just blindly update WordPress core, you might get an angry email 
a minute later, a week later, a month later saying, why did, why did you break? Why did you break that website that you thought no one cares about, but I care about it. And now I'm mad at you for breaking my website and not noticing that you broke my website. And it, like, it's that friction um, that, uh, that automated testing should help. Like all of these tools should be helping people communicate with one another and build up trust, uh, trust between them. Uh, if, if the tools aren't doing that, if, uh, if you're just doing visual, if you're just doing something like code styling checks for, for, for no particular reason, then it's, then it's not all that valuable. But if, uh, if you can take a, a time consuming part of a job, like, uh, visually checking if anything broke and you can, uh, make, uh, make a machine do it faster, more accurately, then you've got more time to do your own job and your coworkers are trusting you more because the, the thing they need from you is happening faster and more reliably. Yep, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely a session I'll be checking out at WP Campus. And, and just for a reminder for listeners, if you can't make it to the conference, we are gonna be streaming these and there'll be recordings available later. So um, never fear, you will have a chance to see the session and, and I definitely encourage you to look Look these up after the fact. Um, I know there's going to be some other Pantheon folks there. Do you want to talk a little bit more? Uh, again, you're our doctoral sponsor, uh, mm -hmm. so we're we're really excited to have you uh, supporting us this year. I think you might also be paying for part of our uh, Friday evening event. Which thank you very Great. much for that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll drink a beer in your honor. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I think you have another person coming as well, at least one other. Yeah, well, I will have Lauren Kelly from our professional services team there. I think she's speaking on a on a panel about Composer. Right. Yeah, we have a panel of folks talking about um, uh, about Composer and um, updates distribution for for software, which uh, I'm really excited to see that one too. There's a lot of good talks this year, so mm -hmm. um, that should be good. You mentioned going to High Ed Web, which is another uh, one of our partner conferences, and so um, I know that's coming up in October. What did you say you're talking about at High Ed Web? Uh, I'll be doing automated testing for Edu. Oh, even better. So there you go. People, if you're making it to Hyatt Web, uh, you want to keep an eye out for Steve there. Well, Steve, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we really appreciate you coming and talk to us, uh, talking to us, and, and also your support and sponsorship. Um, I may very well ask you to come back and talk to me more about web teams, because as Excellent. I mentioned, I have a, a real soft spot for, for discussing how to manage web teams, mostly because I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I really, really appreciate your time. Um, folks, thank you for tuning in to WP Campus this week. Um, don't forget, the conference is just over two weeks away. Uh, if you are interested in attending, we're kind of at the uh, end of registration, but if you reach out to us, we might be able to finagle you a ticket. Um, the schedule and more information is available at 2019.wpcampus.org. And again, Pantheon is our doctoral sponsor. We're delighted to have them, and we look forward to seeing uh, Steve, your, your colleagues at the conference in a couple of weeks. Great. Have fun. Thanks again.